We are going to look at creating the memory match application in Visual Studio. This application we are doing differently than the others that we have done. Instead of doing a web application, we are going to create a WPF, Windows Desktop application. The purpose of this is to show you that the coding that you've been learning is very versatile. It can be used to create a web application, a desktop application, a mobile application, and several other things. Um, it, is, it is the same code. There are some slight differences, like the use of images in, in what we will do in this one is slightly different, but um, otherwise the, the C-sharp is the same. Um, now on this one we will have an XAML as our main page as opposed to an ASPX, uh, but you'll notice that that it's again basically um, HTML controls that you put on the on the screen and when it's rendered out um, it's uh, it it's the same it, it looks the same as what you've been doing before so let's look at uh, how we start it <coughs> So in Visual Studio, we're going to go to File, New Project. In the Create New Project dialog, you're going to want to make sure that you've got C Sharp, Windows, and this probably used to be Web over here. Make sure that it is Desktop. What you are looking for is WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF using .NET Framework. So that's probably not going to be under your recents like it is mine. If you do C Sharp Windows Desktop, WPF App. So make sure you choose the correct one, .NET Framework, WPF App .NET Framework. So once you've found that, you can go ahead and click Next. Make sure it says C-sharp there. should say Windows Desktop XAML. I'm going to name it Memory Match. I'm going to place mine on the desktop. I'm going to hit Create. And so now you can see that you've got a very similar view to what you've had in the past. Uh, down here, instead of a form, you've got a grid. Uh, but once this loads, uh, you're going to want to change. The first thing you want to do is, is set things to the right size. So this is 650, and this is 900. And um, there will be an icon that goes right here, uh, just inside this closing bracket. You'll do icon equals. You can check the code for that. And then inside of the grid is where everything else will go. Now, um, dragging and dropping isn't quite as friendly in, in this as it is in the web application. Uh, let me show you. So we're going to have several of these image here. I'm under WPF controls. We're going to have several of these image, and, and all, it, all it gives you is that. Uh, so you could, you could do that if you want, um, or you can just type it as long as you make sure that you, um, when it gives you the hints as to what it is, you know, follow that. Notice that it's a capital I. And then as you hit a space, you should get these tooltips that pop up. And for everything that you see in the, in the code um, that's provided, you can, you can move through that relatively quickly by highlighting the next item, hitting Enter, and filling out the, the value of it. But that was the image one. Same thing with a label. 
<clears throat> for some reason rather than than giving you um, here's a border it just gives you the the initial tag now one thing I want to point out that is different we've used a label before so I'm going to grab a label is that On all of our others, you have had to put run at equals server. You do not need that for this assignment, okay? Because it is a desktop application. It's not running on the web. So you do not need run at equals server. Um, and then on our previous assignments, you've used an ID equals. That's going to change to an X colon name equals. So instead of an ID equals, you've got an X colon name equals. So again, you do not need run at equals server. And instead of ID equals, you will use an X colon name equals. And you'll see that uh, throughout the code uh, as you look at the, the code for completing it. Aside from that, uh, most of, of what you're going to see in this area is um, it's really just CSS inside, inside of the tag. Uh, you're setting heights, widths, font sizes, font families. You're doing horizontal and vertical alignments. Um, setting margins, which is margins is margin is the, the way of placing it on the screen. So you'll notice that as it moves around on the screen, your margin numbers change um, as to whether it's uh, position from from the upper left or not uh, so you'll you've got four numbers in your margins to, to help you position so to demonstrate those margins uh, just a little bit you'll use them quite a bit in the border so I'm just gonna grab a border here and put it in the grid and you're going to set the start by setting the width and height. So for this one, it happens to be 100 by 100. And then you're going to notice those numbers pop up all around it. So it starts by positioning it in the center there. Um, and what you're going to notice in the code is that um, most things have a horizontal alignment set. It's usually left, but check the code and a vertical alignment set. Most of the time it's top. I think a couple times it might be bottom. Um, but again, check it, don't just assume. But notice that that's pushed it to the upper left-hand corner. And once you've got your width and your height set and your horizontal and vertical alignment set, and then you start setting the margin. So you can do a a number on your X there and then a number on your Y here and you'll see how it positions it on the page and so that's how your how your margin functions on the screen so as you go down through there and you you see that list of basically X Y coordinates of how you're placing it on the screen um, again if you are missing the horizontal and vertical alignment it's it's basically going to go off the center uh, it's a little bit weird. If you're missing these, see, it's it's basically moved it from center over and down. Um, so make sure that you're you've got to start with a before you before you set your margin. You've got to have a you've basically got to have these things. You've got to have the width, the height, where you're going to align it from left um, horizontally and vertically, uh, and then you can you can start playing with the margins that way. So once you've laid it out, I'm um, going to drag another window over. Once you've laid it out, uh, you should see this. Uh, so now all the images I've provided you in a zip file. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you drop those images into, um, I'm going to suggest putting them in two places. 
So inside of your memory match folder, I'm going to suggest pasting them right here. And then I'm also going to suggest going into bin, debug, and pasting them right here. Uh, when you do a control shift B, a, an exe will be generated right here in this folder. Um, so again, unzip those, all those images put one copy here, copy all of them here, and then also copy all of them here. So it will wind up, let me grab a finished one here. Pull this over. So inside of my, my memory match here, um, it created my solution file. Um, and then it's got a nested memory match folder, which is fine for this one. And then inside of here, you can see I've got images in there. And then if I go to bin debug, you'll see that those images are in here as well. You've also got your memory match.exe, which is the which is what runs. Now if you want to test this. Uh, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can do a control shift B, which will create this .exe right here. And once it's, once it's created that exe, you can go to bin debug and you can double click that exe if you're in Windows and it will pop up like this. And it's a, it's a desktop application. So again, when you're in Visual Studio, and you do a build build solution or rebuild solution or do control shift b which is build solution it then creates it it overwrites this exe um, so if you forget to do a control shift b well you're going to have the old exe that's sitting there so again you can after you do a build you can come into bin debug and then just double click, the, double click that exe. And if you don't have any errors, it will load. If you have errors, um, it won't load. And you've got to go figure out what those errors are and set it into debug mode. The way I suggest doing that's that's one way of doing it. Um, the way I suggest doing it is stay in Visual Studio. Um, so we're in Visual Studio. We've got our main window.xaml, our main window.xaml. CS and just click start and that popped up over here so I'll drag it across here so it did the same thing but I'm running in debug mode so Visual Studio is running in the background um, and this is this is running in debug mode here and then you can watch the wrong attempts and the correct items there so we go across here, oops, see if I can get through this without a terrible lot of mistakes. Uh, oops. So you can see my cards are adding up there, my wrong attempts are over here, and then on the last one it says congratulations, play again, and it just resets and it's it's the exact same thing. It's like you've never played it before, right? Congratulations, play again, and it resets again, just like you've never played it before. Now when I hit stop here, you're going to notice Visual Studio will come out of debug mode. And we're back to this point. Now we've looked at a couple of other videos at setting breakpoints. Um, you can likewise 
set breakpoints in your code. Again, that's in this bar over here. So if you set a red breakpoint like that, then when you go into debug mode, it will actually stop there and you can do your step into and step over and go line by line through the code that way as well to help you debug. So to recap, we've gone through creating a new project. So again, in that new project, make sure you choose WPF.NET application or .NET framework. WPF app.NET framework. Um, name it memory match. And then we've gone through looking at uh, just putting a control on the page here. You're going to set your your height, width, and put an icon right here. Um, we've talked about placement on the screen, so setting the width, height, horizontal, vertical alignment, and then how your margins work once you've set those four things. Um, and basically the rest is, is building it out. And again, it's, it's uh, uh, some event handlers like you've, like you've been doing before. Uh, so when you click on, click on an image, uh, it jumps to the, the CS, the code behind, and looks, goes through that section of code, and then it comes back, and you click on another one, and it jumps to the CS and goes through that code again. If they match, it removes them. It just sets the visibility is all. It, it removes them from the screen. Uh, and if they don't match, it just changes the the image that's displayed. So instead of instead of one of those images that that are displayed, the card back goes back on there. So that gets us through uh, looking at how to start your your memory match uh, application. Uh, most most of the students that I've done this one with have enjoyed doing it. It's a little bit funner application to go through. Um, testing it's a, a little more interesting, right? So you get a you get to play something. Um, when it's done there. So um, that'll get you started.